morning guys and thanks for for joining us um i know we 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 spoke about nice big data reports and things like that in the main stage um i'm gonna kind of take you through just the the, the my geotape setting up reports and the value we can get out of the out of the system there um you know we're 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 all aware of the 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 amount of data that that we get from my geotape but uh you know how how do we actually use it and and simply within the my geotape platform um So today I'm going to go through things like, you know, setting up a few simple dashboard reports, um, using the grouping structures, uh, you know, how to set up reports, how do we create custom reports, and I've got a few, you know, what's, what's coming up ahead in the UI. There's, there's, there's some quite exciting changes coming and, and stuff that guys have requested. So getting started, the dashboard, um, we find it's, 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 it's very often a, a, a very underused resource within, within the MyGeotab platform as it offers valuable insights into the productivity of your vehicles and, and things like driver behavior. You can take a single report and, and display it in a multitude of different ways. You know, things like pie charts, bar graphs, things like that, and, and have um, all of this information and, and data at, at the click of a button. These dashboard reports, they're, they're Excel graphs, so if you see something on the dashboard, you click on it, you download it, and you have the reports in your hand. Um, creating a dashboard is as easy as um, taking the report, making some changes, creating your graph, importing it back into the system, and displaying it on the dashboard. Things like grouping, we use grouping in a, in a, in a, a few different ways. Um, essentially, it's there to, to help create structures within your fleet um, on, on the MyGeotab platform. Firstly, grouping can be used as something like an asset register to group vehicles into types and even make some models. This will allow easy access to do fleet evaluations and even create rules for specific vehicle types. So you can group vehicles in types, um, you know, thinking of things like harsh braking and harsh acceleration. Different rules will, 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 will apply to different vehicle types. Think of light motor vehicles versus heavy motor vehicles. Um, secondly, grouping is used to create a divisional organizational structure, limiting access to assets then that may not be in the same region or in the same departments within the business. Um, a complex group and subgroup structure can be created and assets can belong to more than one grouping structure. One of the quickest ways to see this, this, this group or group, uh, subgroup structure in action is to use them as a filter. Group, group filtering is available for numerous sections including vehicles, zones, rules and users and you can also filter by groups in my GeoTab without making explicit changes to the user profile. Um, there, there, there is a, a group filter in the top left hand corner um, that will um, let you see quite, quite quickly what, what belongs to what group within the, within the platform. So creating reporting um, the power of the reports is limited by your creativity, your Excel knowledge, things like that. Um, using Excel formulas, you can create a report to bring through information as you request it. Um, to customize a report, it's, it's, it's probably, um, you know, you, you, you generate a report add in your, your, your um, calculations or your formulas, import it back into the system, and it can be used either as a dashboard report, a report you can generate um, ad hoc or, or on the dashboard. Adding to reporting, there's a way that you can set up reports to be dynamically sent um, when a certain condition is met. Think of things like the maintenance reminder rules. You can set up a rule on the report that it only sends it out when a vehicle is coming up to a service. Another way might be something like a watchdog report, that when a vehicle has been offline for a certain amount of time, 
that it sends out the report to alert you that there may be a problem with one of the devices. Um, so I'm not sure if many people are aware of it, but there is a menu search function on the MyJetsa platform. Um, in the top uh, left, next to the, the badge, there's a little magnifying glass. If you click on it and start typing a menu option, it will start, it'll bring down which, which option you're looking for. It's especially useful for new users that are trying to find their way around the MyJetsa platform. Then they don't have to navigate their way through the, um, through the whole menu structure. Coming soon, in the, in the next probably month or so, there is going to be a quite a major release. Um, there's going to be quite a few changes to the, to the UI. One of them being they've, they, they, they're changing the way reports get uh, generated or downloaded. So instead of waiting for the view, uh, the view kind of screen to, to generate and generate the data in the report, you can directly download the report into either PDF or, or Excel. Um, it'll save time in, in waiting for these reports to, to generate, um, especially when you're selecting uh, quite a large data set over a long period of time. On the, um, on the, on the feature preview option in the, the trip history um, screen, they've, they've changed the look of it quite a lot. You can now see things like the trip start and the trip end where that wasn't there previously. This has been requested by numerous customers and they've kind of listened to what has been requested. Um, also now in the zone edit screen, you can now, it now displays which zone you are currently editing um, and it also does not lose your place as it did previously. Once you've edited a rule, it used to take you back to the menu and pretty much to the start of the menu screen. Now you edit the zone, you add in, you can change the shape and it shows you which zone you are editing and then it brings you back to that, that zone kind of in the, in the list of, of the zones there. On the vehicle edit screen, they've uh, made quite a big change here. You can now see columns added for the license, for the VIN, the odometer, the engine hours, current driver and the comments block. You can also choose to remove or add um, these to that screen or rearrange the order of them by simply dragging the column from one point to another column so that you have the information up in front of you.